Well, political analyst Lincoln Mitchell joins me for more on this story. He's a research scholar at Columbia University's School of International and Public Affairs. Good to see you again, Lincoln. Great to be here. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So, within the last hour, we've heard from President Trump himself. Uh, stand by. I'm going to play that video right now so viewers know exactly what we're talking about. I want to thank everybody for the tremendous support. I'm going to Walter Reed Hospital. I think I'm doing very well, but we're going to make sure that things work out. The First Lady is doing very well. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will never forget it. Thank you. Uh, Lincoln, what's your impression of that video statement? Not the usual length or energy we're accustomed to from President Trump. No, nor is it the usual tone. I mean, this is a, a serious president. He's being very serious at this moment. Perhaps uh, this virus feels real now in a way that it hasn't in the past because it's happening to him. And it's unfortunate that it may have taken this, but we do see that. And we certainly, first of all, he seemed like he was, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I could imagine him being in worse shape. So there's reason to think that maybe he'll be okay, which I think most Americans pretty much would, would like to see happen. So there's a lot of unknowns here as we move forward. Mm. Well, we often talk about the October surprise during the U.S. presidential race. How much of a political earthquake is this with just over four weeks to go to Election Day? Well, I'm in San Francisco where we know a little bit about earthquakes, and I would say it's a minor tremor in terms of its impact on the election itself. First of all, many people are voting. Secondly, people's opinions about Trump are pretty solid right now. Many like him, a majority dislike him, and the fact that he is ill with this very serious disease, I think that engenders sympathy from the American people. We want him to get better, but it doesn't make us think he's a good president. So I don't think this has a huge impact on the election. Obviously, from a logistical perspective, will we have a debate? Will, we, will he be able to do campaign rallies? You know, how will the Biden? We saw that Biden pulled his negative ads, which is a smart move. But I don't see Trump making an effort. I don't see this leading to persuading people to abandon Biden and go back to Trump or go to Trump, which is what he needs to do if he's going to win this election in a free and fair and a democratic way. Right. Well, so the news has put the coronavirus right at the front center of this election season. Do you think it will finally reshape the conversation about the pandemic itself here in the U.S.? Well, that's, that to me is the most interesting part about this. Donald Trump has committed himself to this notion that we shouldn't take COVID all that seriously, that it'll magically go away, that it's, you know, a Chinese plot, all of this nonsense, instead of focusing on doing what I think are some very basic things, push Americans to wear masks, push the social distancing, and have, and we shut down in March, shut down longer and use that time well than the initial shutdown. He's done none of those things. The fact that he now has the disease doesn't change all of that. So what it does is it focuses people on the gravity of COVID, which most of us are aware of anyway, and when you focus on the gravity of COVID, regardless of his own personal health, it's hard to not to focus on the fact that Donald Trump has mishandled this in a frankly murderous way. Mm. This is not just he messed up. This is he deliberately almost ignored this and put people's lives in danger. Trump is sick today, but thousands of other Americans who are not who did were not living in denial about this, who didn't encourage people to ignore the policies, are also sick. So why we should while we should hope for a recovery for Donald Trump. We should hope for recovery from all people around the world who are suffering from this disease. Well, you know, I want to build on this point about President Trump downplaying the pandemic. In fact, in recent weeks, he's continued to hold crowded campaign events in defiance of the guidance by his own health officials. How do you think his campaign will approach this, you know, for minimal damage? What's the spin here? Well, the spin, if you're sitting in the campaign, is that we have some time here where Donald Trump is not going to be front and center. And from a very basic political standpoint, because Donald Trump is so disliked, that's not a terrible thing. He can't do another debate performance like he did on Monday or Tuesday. That would be very damaging. So you pull him, he gets pulled back from the debate stage. He gets pulled back from those rallies. Those rallies are tremendous health hazards, but they're also politically damaging because they're not well attended because any swing voter looks at it and says, this man is terrifying. So from the campaign perspective, ironically, what you could be doing, what they could be doing is focusing on the communication through the ads, the media, the social media, and things like that. And the story about Donald Trump should be, from a campaign perspective, you know, his health. Is he getting better? We hope he's getting better and all of that. Because every time Donald Trump opens his mouth and rants about some weird conspiracy theory about Hunter Biden, about this disease, about anything else, it hurts the Republicans' electoral chances. Mm. And it was also a very unorthodox method of announcing. I mean, he bypassed official channels, just tweeted at 1 a.m., and that tweet 
very quickly surpassed more than a million likes, becoming his most liked and most shared tweet of all time. What does that say to you? Well, it also tells you something else. One of the many, many Americans didn't quite believe it because the, the rank dishonesty about every aspect of this administration leads people to think the, the unthinkable, that Donald Trump would fake coronavirus, fake having coronavirus. We see now that that is unlikely. But that is the way he chose to announce, and that speaks to the level of distrust uh, towards the administration from the American people. And that, that's also very troubling.